If you turn to Mark first chapter, in the 23rd verse, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with you, thou Jesus of Nazareth? So, friends, when he had called to him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, actually speaking, I do not know to what extent some of these proliferating nervous diseases can be ascribed to these works of darkness. Now, there are many people who don't realize that. They think it's a little game or something, and they suffer horribly. In the 47th chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 47, 10, For thou hast trusted in your wickedness, Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted you. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon you. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon you. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which thou shalt not know. You see, some of the calamities that are overtaking Canada and the United States today are calamities that overtook idolatrous places. You see, some of the droughts, some of the floods, some of these horrible, you know, in Western Europe, they're having some furious winds, blowing down trees, killing people. You see, friends, some of these works of the devil, they're not wholly natural features. Now, prayer has gone down. The prayer meeting has become a talking meeting. You know what prayer meeting means? Now, everybody talks. And by the time there is, the time is nearly up. Oh, let's go to prayer now. So there's just a concluding prayer or two. Is that a prayer meeting? Now, my dear friends, I hold you responsible. You know, sometimes there's a big gulf between the preacher and the people in the pew. And the people in the pew say, think, oh, the preacher hardly knows what he's saying. And uh, certainly these things are not expected of me. But my dear friends, before both the preacher and the people stand before the word of God, we stand or fall by the word of God. And look, if you choose to be a heathen person, a pagan, who say, belly is my God. I exist just to earn my bread, to draw my paycheck from whatever source and shut my eyes concerning all these other matters. 
in which people are drowning and dying. Well, my dear friends, I don't believe you have anything of a conscience. How can a man be silent? You know, one of the things that my father pursued, and uh, I'm amazed at his persistence, and you know, when he went amongst a criminal tribe, my, I had never seen such specimens of humanity. Sickly people, demon-possessed, demented, mad, possessed by evil spirits. And when revival broke out, and, you know, this weekend, in that very place, there is to be a student's camp where somewhere around 4,000 or more young people will gather. We have a campus there now, which uh, is the venue of some of our big meetings. Just imagine a criminal tribe being converted into a missionary base, out of which people who are touched by God, transformed by God, go out to various places to glorify God. Now, it's uh, estimated that the crowd is upwards of 100,000. And you can imagine, brilliant the water supplies needed for such a camp and uh, all the rest. But many of them have lived very simply. They can get by with so little. And they are there principally to hear the word of God. So it can be done. You see, as I work amongst uh, headhunters and those that have had down the ages awful enmity towards other tribes on the borders of Burma. You know, many soldiers died in the war in that region, rugged territory, hard territory. They died from dysentery, they died for, from malaria, and uh, so many GIs and uh, British Tommies, they never returned from that war with the Japanese in those jungles and so on. Now, as we begin to preach in those areas, we feel, you know, we come head on with the powers of darkness that have ruled them for ages. You know, my dear friends, the idea that I am sitting pretty comfortably over here in my couch before the television is, is self-deception. No, all around you, desolation and destruction and the works of darkness are rampaging and destroying lives. 
You know, that's no time for you and me to be comfortable. So my dear friends, when I went and began preaching 20 years ago in those regions, well, to find people who will stick there seemed very hard. One young man whom we had trained, very clever fellow, uh, he had had his university training and then went through our Bible school. But suddenly he took off. He couldn't bear, he couldn't, he saw no future to that work. You know, self-preservation, he felt, was sufficient cause for him to desert his post. But my dear people, I have seen very few deserters. Very few. You know, but self-interest can be very strong. And in that very place, they threatened to stone me. Did that stop me? No. Not by any means. You see, friends, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Second Timothy, first chapter, seventh verse. God has not given us the spirit of fear. You know, today we see another threat. What is it? The gangs. And uh, those that are running drugs. Money is involved, and so they think nothing of killing off them. anybody who comes in their way. And so they buy their way with money through officialdom. I say, if our churches cannot produce enforcement officers who are above money, what good are those churches? That's not a church. A church should be able to produce men who can attend to these various fronts. We are fighting a warfare on many fronts. It's finance, brother, it's finance. What? It's economy, stupid, it's economy. Why didn't Peter cry that way? You see, that cry has gotten into the hearts of people. What do you do with such people? They're useless. They're useless. God is my provider. Jehovah Jireh is his name. I can't possibly change his name. My God will supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Jehovah Jireh is his name. None of us here is authorized to change his name, nor can we. But we think it's all to do with money. It's all to do with money. No, not at all. It's to do with faith. You see, my dear friends, where does the devil attack us? He attacks us in prayer. He doesn't want two or three people to get together and pray. You know, he does not mind if they talk their heads off and discuss and discuss and discuss or do whatever. 
But should they go to prayer, he does not want anybody to do that. So prayer has died. Even in the pulpit, it has died. You know, people like me are in grave danger because this infection is a spreading infection, deadly infection. You see, well, we are too busy. We are too busy. What, what do you mean? You're, you're too busy with what? Digging your own grave. Digging the grave of your neighbor. If you perceive that to be your main business on earth, well, I don't know who can help you. But you see, my dear friends, we see God saying here in Isaiah 47, once again, please, and the 12th verse, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with your enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from your youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now your astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save you from these things that shall come upon you. You see, so there is the backwash, there is the resulting darkness. You know, the countries today in Europe, over here, countries today want qualified uh, technical men. They're not able to find enough technical men. So they just want anybody from anywhere. Now, all right, this is a trend. I don't think it is reversible. In many ways, the world is becoming a small place. Does it mean, therefore, that these technical men can bring in whatever idol they please? You know, one young man said to me, he found a job in Saudi Arabia. But he said, I'm going to keep my Bible right on top. So when the customs examine my cases, they will see the Bible right on top. If they object to it, I will leave the land. So he kept his Bible right on top. The official asked him to open it, open up. He saw the Bible right on top, didn't say a word. And he went on to work and to start a little prayer group also. So there are some secret prayer groups going in those lands. But you see, folks, 
we don't have the courage these days to say we don't want idolatry. Of course, there is a law which forbids the Senate or House from making any laws the Constitution forbids this, which the state dictates about religion. All right, there is that law. So, possibly, this invasion of idolatry is something which constitutionally we cannot avoid. It is a spiritual battle. You and I have to pray that people will dump these idols in the sewers or canals or rivers or whatever, wherever. So it's a spiritual battle. The law is not going to aid us in this regard. The, the misinterpretation of the Constitution by the highest courts have thrown the country wide open to all kinds of perversity. So, my friends, it is a spiritual battle. It's left with you and me. Are we going to win in this battle? Are we going to gear ourselves first of all and say, hey, I'm going to do this? You know, see, I won't pass it by. I won't pa pass it up. I won't expect somebody else to do the job. This is a matter that concerns my Lord's glory. And I am going to pray and bind these powers of darkness. You see, if Daniel triumphed in Babylon, you cannot imagine what a battle it must have been. It's a battle against the powers of darkness. Now, first of all, let everyone here realize you're in the middle of a battle. You see, a boxer in the middle of a fight cannot take his eye off his opponent for a fraction of a second. He dare not. He can't lower his guard for any reason. See, you and I, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. The Lord will give us the grace. We must see that all the hindrances that are there should be removed. And unbelief is another big devil. Today, people are dogged by unbelief. You see, they see it, they read it, they don't believe it. They nod their heads, they write their notes, but they don't believe it. They don't practice it. Let us pray. Loving Father, we do not want to be those who are classified as hearers only. 
We want to enter into this battle. I want to be of some little use in this battle. Don't discharge me. I pray you. We want to be your disciples, walking in your footsteps. Help us, good Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen.